In this video, I'm going to walk you through a CFA level one exam style question on the relationship between the price and yield on bonds and more generally fixed income securities. If this is something you want to get right in the exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. Okay, so this is the question which I want us to have a go at. Brian Cormack and Andrea Fitch, candidates in the CFA level one exam, are discussing the valuation of a 5% 5.8% annual pay corporate bond with a face value of €1,000 and 15 years to maturity. The bond is currently trading at par. Cormac makes the following statement. The market currently requires a 5.8% return on the investment in the bond. If required returns were to increase by 50 basis points, the bond price would drop by 47.62. And Fitch adds... In that case, a 50 basis point fall in the required rate of return would cause the bond to increase to 1047.62. And we obviously have to um, check which statement is correct. And we've got some options there. Now, this question um, you know, is relatively easy, but it touches on a very fundamental concept, and that's the relationship between price and yield. So what I'm going to do first is draw a, um, a graph which uh, is often used to depict the relationship that I'm talking about here. On the vertical axis I'm going to have the price of a bond and over here on the uh, horizontal axis I'm going to have the yield, the market yield, meaning the uh, level of rate yield required by investors. So required rate of return, obviously as required by the market or by investors. And um, the first thing to understand is that if our bond, sorry, I'm looking at the question now, if our bond is um, trading at par, it means that the current price for the bond is equal to par value 1000 euros. So par value. And uh, that's because the uh, level of return required by market participants is in line with whatever the coupon rate is on the bond, so 5.8%. It seems that this coupon on the bond, the coupon rate, is perfectly in line with what investors would expect on a bond with this level of risk. Good. Okay, so the first part of the statement made by Cormac, the market currently requires a 5.8% return on the investment in the bond, is absolutely spot on. What about the notion that if required returns were to increase by 50 basis points, the bond price would drop by 47.62? Well, generally speaking, the direction of the change is okay. Yes, if um, the level of return required by market participants goes up by 50 basis points, meaning by 0.5 of a, of a percent up to a new level of 6.3, the bond would indeed um, experience a drop because its coupon would not be enough to compensate investors for the risk which they now see in this bond. Let's quickly compute what this would be. So, if we wanted to compute the new price level over here, we would need to, in our calculators, basically input the following data. We would have an n parameter equal to 15. That's the number of periods. What else? We would need a, uh, a future value, a par value of uh, you know, 1,000. We would need to have the coupon, the PMT parameter, set up at whatever is the coupon level. That's 5.8% uh, of 1,000. That's going to be 58, isn't it? And what else do we need um, as well? We're, well, we'll be looking for the PV. That's the um, unknown. But we'll tell the calculator that the yield currently required by investors is 6.3, so 6.3. And it should tell us a PV, which is obviously going to be lower than um, 1,000. Let's do this on the calculator. So over to the time value of money worksheet. Let's clear it. So second followed by the FV key. And I've got 15 for N. I've got 6.3 for I over Y. PV is what I'm looking for, 1,000 for ever V, 
and 58 for PMT. Let's compute the PV. Okay, it shows an answer or a result equal to 952.38. That's the new value. And, you know, let me show this on our um, graph here. 952, sorry, 0.38. And... Uh, Let's see what the size of this drop is. Well, it's a drop from 1,000 to 952.38. So a drop of 47.62, which means the statement made by Cormac was absolutely right. However, let's have a look at the statement which was made by Fitch. Um, Andrea Fitch said, in the case of a 50 basis point fall in the uh, required rate of return, the bond would therefore rise uh, by an equivalent amount, also 47.62, but upwards to a new level of 1047.62. Well, that's not necessarily going to be the case because if you have a movement to the left in the level of market yield required, so this would be a this time a drop by 0.5% or 50 basis points to a, I guess, what would be a level of 5.3. Uh, Let's check what the price would be. Well, over here, the only thing I need to change on my calculator, because I've got everything set up already, the only thing I'd need to change is the I over Y parameter and make this, well, 5.3 instead of 6.3 because I've got the numbers stored in my time value of money worksheet. I haven't cleared it. I'm just going to say 5.3 followed by I over Y and recompute the PV. Okay, as you can see, the PV this time is 1050.86. 1050.86. This is a 5 over here. I'm sorry for making this a bit messy. 1050.86, which I'm going to draw over here. And I'm exaggerating a little bit because I want to emphasize the fact that the increase given a the same drop in the level of market yield over here, this increase is definitely higher. It's an increase of 50.86. And this gives rise to a very fundamental property of um, bond price versus yield charts. They exhibit something called convexity. This is not a straight line. This is a convex line. And the amount of convexity is measured by a parameter called convexity, which you'll read about and study about in a further section of the uh, curriculum, and we'll have questions on it as well later on. And that's the fundamental relationship. So given a certain amount of change to market yields, they're not going to produce the same um, movement um, on the price axis. The change is going, the, the price drop is going to be smaller for an um, interest rate increase or a market yield increase and bigger for an equivalent market yield decrease. So let's have the, um, let's, let's analyze the question once again. Answer A, both Cormac and Fitch are correct. Well, um, that's not the case. Cormac is correct, and Cormac is Brian Cormac, is correct with regard to the change in the bond price given a 50 basis point increase in the discount rate, but incorrect with regard to the returns generally, uh, currently required by investors. Well, that's not correct because he is actually correct in both respects. Um, his statement that investors currently require a, uh, a yield of 5.8%, uh, which is in line with the coupon rate, was absolutely fine, given that the bond was trading at its par value. And Fitch, th this is answer C, Fitch is correct with regard to the direction of the price change. And Fitch says, in case of a 50 basis point fall, the bond price... Um, uh, the bond price would increase. Well, she's she's correct in terms of the 
direction of the change, but incorrect with regard to the new price level. This statement is absolutely fine. So it's statement C that becomes the correct answer to this question. Let me write it down maybe over here. Yes, that's the correct one.